Good evening and welcome to the June 22nd, 2015 meeting of the Board of Selectmen. Um, is there a motion to um, approve the regular board minutes from June 8th, 2015? So moved. Second. Moved by Paul, second by Phyllis. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And we have several folks signed up for public participation. Um, the public participation is not just to explain it. It's not a question and answer. It's for folks to make a statement. Um, two, we can comment on that. It doesn't always happen, though. We, we take it for our information and then um, speak as a board at some point to, to talk about anything we need to do with regard to what folks have talked about. So if um, Susan Randolph Fry could come up, and if you could identify yourself when you get to the mic. Thank you. Good evening. Can Good you evening. hear me? <laughs> yes. My name is Susan Randolph Fry. As secretary of the Wakefield Civic League, the WCL, I'm here this evening on behalf of the WCL Board of Directors to follow up on our letter published in the Wakefield Daily Item on June 15, 2015, concerning the board behavior experienced by members of the public 10th Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. A copy of that letter is attached to the printout that I will give you this evening. As our letter stated, we appreciate the challenges faced by the ZBA members and recognize that frustrations can mount during a long permitting process. However, we believe you will agree that members of the public deserve at least the same courteous treatment as the proponents of projects. And of course, our town officials do encourage the public to take their concerns to the ZBA. The WCL understands and acknowledges that the public is one third of the permitting process and part of WCL's purpose is to be representative of those who will most likely be required to adjust their lifestyles and make sacrifices when a project is constructed near their home. The rude behaviors during the meeting referred to above included snickering faces, using cell phones, eating, rolling of eyes, tossing of snacks across the aisle, derogatory remarks and personal attacks all of which are unacceptable, particularly at a public meeting. Coincidentally, during a meeting with a different town board, another citizen was also appalled by that board's mistreatment of her, this time by one member in particular. These incidents are not unprecedented, and they demonstrate an attitude of impatience at best and disdain for the public at worst. This behavior only serves to discourage people from participating in town government. The Wakefield Civic League respectfully requests that the Board of Selectmen look into these episodes of inappropriate and disrespectful board behavior toward people during meetings and place this matter on the agenda for the next Board of Selectmen meeting, which WCL will attend in order to hear your response. Citizens that you represent must be assured of courteous and respectful treatment during their diligence, and they in turn should give you courteous response as well. Um, we thank you for your anticipated thorough attention to this important, important matter. Should you wish to contact the Wakefield Civic League, our contact information is shown at the bottom of this statement, a copy of which I will give you now. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. For the folks that came in a little bit late and didn't have a chance to sign the public participation, are you all here about the massage parlor? Yes? Excellent. Yes. Thank you for acknowledging. What about anyone else who wants to talk? Roddy, you already signed? Yeah, we signed. Dan? No. So we're going to take this, um, I'm going to do something a little bit different. Instead of calling up Michelle Penta, who was the first person to sign, I'm going to have Steve Mayo, our town administrator, talk a little bit, and then you can come and talk, because there has been a lot of misinformation. Um, I don't look at any of the social media, because it's not good for my health. 
but there's a ton of inf misinformation that has been happening around this. Obviously, it's a problem. Things have been done in the town, maybe unbeknownst to many people who live in the town, as we're not going to put our hands, show our hands for investigations for obvious reasons. Um, but I think um, Steve can enlighten folks about some information, and then you are absolutely free to come and talk. Okay, Steve. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I want to thank Michelle for calling me on the phone on uh, Friday. Um, it was nice to get to talk to you again. We hadn't talked in a while, so I do appreciate you calling me. Um, and, and for bringing the, uh, uh, this issue to us. Um, one thing I have learned about this community <coughs> is that I want everyone to work together to make it great. So I do appreciate that because uh, we, we can't know everything, unfortunately. Um, one thing I want to say is I think we all need to be very careful um, that we can't assume that all Asian Body Works establishments or massage parlors are in fact practicing illegal activities. We can't assume that all of them aren't licensed because there are some that are through the state. Through the state. And we can't assume, assume that they all are, are trafficking in, um, in uh, illegal or in illegal immigrants and women, just as we can't say all secondhand town stores are selling stolen goods. In that case, we did deal with that. We do have a local bylaw to look at that because we were in, in, we were concerned about that, and that and that has been a deterrent. And I, I think the police chief thinks so. And has we have good shops now? I think that makes everybody better. So, anyway, um, let me tell you where we are on the Asian body work issues or the uh, massage parlor issues. A few years ago, the state actually used the Board of Health Authority. Actually, these mm -hmm. establishments. Um, were, were um, uh, regulated by the Board of Health, and actually it worked. The Board of Health went out, they did investigations, they did inspections. Um, our health agent, uh, Ruth Clay, who I talked about this this morning, um, and in fact other places that have massages, like a lot of your hair salons have massages, they remember Ruth coming in and being very diligent and, you know, everyone's afraid to do anything. With Ruth, as am I, so I, I get that. Um, but unfortunately, the state usurped that, um, that regulation. And when they did change the statute, unfortunately, one thing they did too is they left a loophole. They left a number of um, types of businesses or types of services that may be licensed by the local board, but the state has effectively washed their hands of it. Okay? That is one issue that we do need to handle in Wakefield. Since I believe that local regulation is much better and, um, and just is, I think local government is the best. I am actually meeting with the Board of Health tomorrow night to talk about a, uh, a bylaw that the Board of Health, or a regulation that the Board of Health drafted in Weymouth because they too have these problems and I want to thank, although I had this before, was it Kathleen Tetro? Yes. Kathleen had actually given me another copy tonight so I have already seen this, I've already talked to the uh, health agent about it. And uh, that the Board of Health is actually meeting tomorrow night, and this is going to be discussed at their meeting. So I talked to her today, so we're bringing that up. The thing about Board of Health uh, regulations, and Town Council will confirm this, they are not, um, there's no grandfather, so the Board of Health can go in and stop that. Um, so that's something that's very important. Um, so we'll be talking about that. The other thing that I want to say, and I have a little bit of uh, uh, new information for you is that the department have done a number of raids on establishments in Wakefield, some of which actually have licenses by the state, okay? Some of which with don't, but some of them that are licensed. We have, in fact, arrested people at these establishments um, for solicitation. They have been taken to, to court. Uh, we've worked with the uh, AG and the DA's office on it. And I'm sorry to say that in many cases, they've been let go very quickly by the judges. In this particular uh, instance on this uh, property in North Ave, um, uh, I've, been talk I've been talking to the police chief all weekend about this and before. Um, today, uh, as part of an ongoing investigation that they had, there actually was an arrest made for solicitation and there was a uh, large amount of cash confiscated and the, uh, we will be working at the town of Wakefield Police Department We'll be working with the Attorney General's office and the District Attorney's office to see how moves. One of the problems with these places that are state sanctioned or that on state states are state regulated is that it is more difficult for us to coordinate with their task force. We, so we, we didn't wait. 
we went right in. Our guys went right in. I think I read on uh, one of the Facebook uh, over the weekend that um, there was someone doing a detail right outside. Well, that person may have been doing surveillance of what was going on, gathering some information. So I'm going to ask that the community does trust the police. They know what they're doing. They do a great job. I get it. Um, I'm not happy that these establishments have come in here. I've talked with some other um, you know, mayors and uh, uh, town administrators around. And if you go on the um, Division of Professional Licensure, every community around us, with the exception of Linfield, I admit, has places that are licensed. I think Wakefield has been this genre. I can't say exactly what it is. Um, Melrose has seven. Stoneham has six. Reading has four. Um, I kind of laugh that there are six that are licensed in Lynn. I think there's frankly a lot more, but that's those are the ones that have been licensed. Um, and I didn't check every other cities in town. I do know that we also spoke to the Weymouth police chief, or, or our police chief did, and the Weymouth police chief said they're all coming to Wakefield now because we have this regulation. So they did a great job in Weymouth in what they drafted. So that's what I'll be talking to the um, Board of Health about tomorrow evening. They meet at town hall at 730 I'd encourage any of you to come to CAN. I know it's tough to go out to meetings every night of the week, but again, just to finish up, I do appreciate the fact that um, uh, you people were so vigilant out there. I think, uh, Michelle, your strand must have been 200 plus people long. You broke the internet. You broke the internet, <laughs> that's right. You know, we got complaints about that too on other parts of time. But uh, no, it was a great job, and it's why you're doing your job. We're doing, I think, the best that we can in a uh, industry that is tough. To handle, so I just wanted to say that, and uh, people okay. can certainly speak. But I wanted to get that out. There we start. Thank you, Michelle. Well, I typed this all up, but now we, I don't really have to read it because you <laughs> talked about a lot of the things that I was going to bring up. But I'll bring it up anyway. But I appreciate the response and, and talking to you, Steve, about this issue because um, it's something that has been going on obviously for a while. But then when we saw the lot, when I noticed the last one open up on not they have um, I really became concerned it just seems like they're popping up everywhere and um, obviously it's not the type of business that we want to see in our town uh, not the message you want to send to people that we want to come to our town to open up their businesses um, a few of the things that I that you haven't touched upon yet that I just want to order I know you can't answer but um, you know the landlords that are involved with renting to these people I, I can't imagine they don't know what it is but to give them the benefit of the doubt, you know, is, is it possible to reach out to them to let them know that there is a legal activity taking place at right. these we, places we are? Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Um, just to let them know that, you know, it's something that Wakefield does yeah. not appreciate or want to have. Um, I think you touched upon everything else that I was going to talk about the Board of Health, the Police Department, uh, you know, and just the fact that these places are operating in full view and next to dancing schools and Little League fields and people's homes and the train station, and it's obviously a, a big blemish on our town. And I do appreciate you taking action so quickly, and I know that there was things taking place that was written in the item a few times that buses had been made, but the fact that it just seemed like a new one and another one that, you know, it was like an epidemic, and I just felt like it was time to reach out to... No, to I, I appreciate it, like said. Thank you. So thank you for everything that you've done so far and will do. Um, Madam Chair, yes. can I suggest that we do have a public hearing at 745? Yep. If you open that and then continue it, we can uh, maybe take if anybody else wants to speak. Sure. So we can postpone. We can yeah we can we can open okay. it and then continue it till Sounds good. Um, so folks can hold for a second that are going to speak next. We have a public hearing scheduled for seven forty five, and we need a um, motion to open it, and then we will move to continue that for a few moments. Uh, so moved. Second, moved by Paul. Second by Phyllis. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Roll, 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 roll call. call. Roll call. Aye. 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 Yeah. No. Thank you. <laughs> And we move to continue it to complete. I move to continue the hearing until we can finish chatting. Public hearing. About 10 minutes or so. Sounds yeah. good. <laughs> all right. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. All set. Um, Kathleen. Hi, I'm Kathleen Tatro. I am a professional massage therapist. I work in Wakefield as well as in Weymouth. 
I like you, I'm appalled at the way the state itself has handled the licensure and certification. Previous to this, uh, I'm, I'm sure you're probably aware, I was required to have TB tests, I was required to be nationally certified, I was required to have all of these professional statistics, and now I'm required to just have 500 hours in. So it is appalling to me that that's all that's required. So me personally, I can't speak for all massage therapists, I will go to, to, to town hall and I will give you as much identification as you need. I will supply whatever you need because I am a professional. It really hurts me that these places open up and I appreciate that you're doing all you can because for somebody to come in and see me as a professional remotely suggest that, it's, it puts me in a position where it, you're in a room with a closed door on the other end and you, you only have one exit out. So it puts you in a very like, um, hard, hard place. So I, anything you could do that would get rid of these, I would definitely appreciate, and I would love to help in any way I can, which is why I, I printed that out, and hopefully that's something that we can institute in this town. Um, I just, I hope I'm coming across with everything I'd like to express to you, is because this is, this is my town. We've lived here for 14 years. I love it here. It's such a family community, and to have these places open up next to a dance studio in the center of town, and then all that, the pretty much sketchy people it's bringing into our town, it's, it's gonna also depreciate the value of our homes and our, our town, and it's just not something I wanna see from a professional or a family point of view. So, whatever you need me to do, we will, in my, where I work at Tanya, I'm sure we will do whatever we need to do. You wanna come and inspect, we will inspect, and we will just keep addressing being professional. I think that's pretty much what I have to say. Thank you, Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Um, Tracy? Hi, Hi, I'm Tracy Shea. Again, like the, I don't want to have a lot of redundancy. Mm -hmm. We appreciate that even hearing about it, they have taken a step to try to figure something out. I also did write something, but it's no need to read the whole because we did touch on most of it. Um, so, you know, like you said, the simple search on the internet is bringing up seven or eight places and it's giving reviews. So it's not like it, this isn't happening because it is. And one thing I wanted, I'm not sure it had exactly. I mean, my understanding is that these places, they, we know they're regulated differently also than maybe a legit massage problem. <coughs> And it just blows your mind, like, do the landlords know this? Like, that was just a big concern, sure. too, is, or are they just renting this property and then setting up shop? Is that the case? Maybe it's so, maybe they don't know, and maybe they do. We don't know that. Um, do you, I just think we really need to put pressure maybe on our state representatives that we need to have, you know, they need to help change the laws that are in place. This isn't something you can do or necessarily, I mean, you can maybe help, but you know, and I know the Wayfield Police Department is definitely doing their job. I know they've, you know, have rested, but that's not, it's almost like we need something <coughs> more help sure. further, you know, further up. That's not something we could handle, maybe one or two of them, but not, and they are fails in the dance studios. And actually, I was having lunch today at the North Ave Diner about noontime, sitting by the window, and <laughs> oh my God, there's one. Oh, oh, lady in handcuffs. Oh, but I mean, I guess it, it, it almost just, it wasn't a good thing at all, but it just, I think, validated sure. our concern that mm -hmm. I have mentioned this months ago. Many of us were ridiculed. You know, what do you have time for? It's like, well, it's not that you have time. My hairdresser is next door. I went in to just kind of check one out. Two minutes later of, did you call? You come here before? No, 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 no pamphlet, no brochure. I just said, no, I just would like a menu of your prices. Maybe, you know, a brochure, a pamphlet. You know, I know there's a language barrier, so I'm trying to use any word I could think of besides, you know, give me something. Can I look at something? Um, I think pretty much, don't miss, but like, We've covered everything pretty much today, but I just think, you know, look at what happened. Was it Plymouth where, I mean, there were underage girls. Are they here? Maybe not, but 
It's very possible. Mm -hmm. If that's the case too, that's like the number one reason that sure. we gotta t try to do something. But no, I do. I appreciate you guys listening. Thank you. This is like a really wow. Thing. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you very so much. much, Rada. My name is Rada Frollerstein. I did uh, write up only a couple of words to remind me to um, not to forget, and a lot of it really has been covered by all. Um, one other um, biggest concern that I have, I have uh, children in this town, in this school, I own a business in this town, and my biggest concern is how quickly, how fast we attracted um, type of businesses that are um, doing illegal activities which is um, doubled in a year. And I agree, not all Asian body works are um, illegal, but when you call them body works and some other sketchy names, um, generally 90% uh, of the time they are doing illegal activity. Also, if you, um, I research a little bit by, you know, thank you Michelle for that thread, uh, about that um, website that is called rubmap.com. Other town around us do not have as many as we do even listed. So that was a, a biggest concern how quickly and uh, it, they are doubling. And also, uh, are we too slow in our reaction or preventing or making it difficult, more difficult for these places uh, to open? So my concern is by the um, move forward and figure this out, figure that out. Um, check out what the other towns and everything else that we need to do. We have a couple of more places open uh, on the main street across the CVS, two of them in fact. Uh, one used to be old um, Avon store and now the hair salon that vacated. Are we gonna have, um, we're attracting obviously those type of businesses, so how many of those, they're gonna quickly open up because state law says this or that and a loophole allow our town to actually make it easy for them to pop up. So that was my major concern. Um, you know, yes, we are, you know, you all are working towards it, but, um, and, and message, are we going to be known for a mecca of Asian body works and all that fancy word for um, really offering a prosthesis? I know people are not, they don't like to use that word, but that's what they are. So let's not call them body works and, and the massages and whatever they are. They uh, may call themselves like that, but A, they are locked doors. You can't walk in freely. They're all blocked up. You know who is operating a legal massage services and who is not. It's so evident even, I'm not trained, you know, a law enforcement type of a person, but you can tell. So that's my biggest um, concern that we're maybe too slow and we're attracting them. And um, Melrose does not have any listed on that rub map. Lynn has only listed one. That's where the, they're attracting type of people to use their services and illegal activity by having this website that they are listed, their businesses that are offering those type of um, um, sexual favor um, uh, on those um, sites. So there's a, other town don't have a lot of these type of businesses listed. So my other concern is how many are not listed and how many are just flying under the radar. Every town might have that problem. So um, I, it, it's, it's never mind that attracting wrong people in town and safety of our children and all that. It's just mind boggling that they just pop up everywhere and it's not good enough to say it's legal. It's not good enough to say um, all the loophole, this and that. It's really not good enough to have them pop up and double in six months, what we had a year ago, or even in a year. It's just very concerning that this is gonna be happening unless we absolutely put a stop to it. So that's all I have to say. Thank you.
Are we done with the? We are done with. Can I just comment on this a little? Bit? Sure. I, if I'm just, I mean, I, so I just pulled it up as I said. Rub maps. It's characterized as erotic massage parlors in Wakefield with with reviews from satisfied customers, and there's eight of them, and it has their name, their phone number, their address, the picture of the building, the name of the masseuse. Um, for me, I would say there's probably something that approaches probable cause here. I don't know. Mr. Mullen, what your thoughts are to, to go do something about it from a police standpoint, maybe without more, without catching somebody in the act. And then I would also ask about, um, and I'll ask you directly, what are our rights with respect to civil forfeiture? Can we just let the landlords know this stuff's going on in your building. If we find somebody, find something going on, we, we will take your building. Uh, do we have that power? Is it we have to bring the state police? I don't know where that power exists and what type of crimes. What type of crimes and, and what law enforcement has the right to enact, some, you know, start a well, process for civil for, for That the landlord knew, I don't think that I'd want to encourage you to think that we could take any real property. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that the action would be against the lessee that's running the business. Um, it's not a very capital intensive business, of course. It's right. Wouldn't it be interesting if we gave the landlord actual notice at the places where we've arrested people and said, you now have actual notice that this is going on in your property. Next time we come in, you knew uh, you're benefiting financially from the rent these people are paying. We're going to take your building. Well, arrests are a public record. There's certainly no reason why we can't notify uh, landlords of any arrests that occur in their building. Yeah, and, and let, I think we'd let them know. In fact, I'd, I'd ask that we let them know that, you know, make them aware of whatever the civil mm -hmm. civil forfeiture remedy is. And for everybody listening, it means yeah, definitely. You, whatever property you use to, to can be taken, be forfeited to the government. So um, I think we should let them know because that's where it starts. The landlords are turning, I suspect most of them, turning a blind eye towards this. They know exactly what's going on um, and are happy to collect their rent from wherever they live and profit off of whatever's going on in Wakefield. And it's, it's been the same issue with so many issues with our downtown buildings, you know, upkeep, maintenance, uh, the, you know, the facades and lack of improvements and care. Um, all of it comes back to absentee landlords and the owners who are happy to collect their check, and it doesn't matter what the ramifications are on the citizens of Wakefield. And um, I think this is, this is despicable. I think they know what's happening. They're turning a the blind eye, and as I said, they're, they're happy to collect that check and pretend they don't know what's going on. I think they all know what's going on. If there's public record to suggest they have actual notice, um, we should let them do that. We are about to commence or ready to commence um, civil forfeiture actions, and I bet you'll see a lot of these uh, shops get shuttered and, and be vacated pretty soon. So that would be my recommendation. Just let's, let's go right for the money, right at the top, and let them know we're serious and, and watch the behavior change. And I think the Board of Health will vote on, I assume they will vote on certain regulations that can allow them to go in here and to, to review and to stop some of the business that's not going to make them um, make it profitable. I was on the Board of Health when the state took, took the massage licensure away from us. And we were concerned, and I remember three years ago now that I've left it, they started popping up in Reading. Wakefield did not have any. And they showed up in Reading, and we thought it's only going to be a matter of time before they start popping up here. Yeah. And this is where it seems to have bloomed in the last several months. So we're, you know, everyone's aware of it because it became so visible so quickly. Um, and Board of Health will act, the police are acting, and what Brian said with regard to speaking to the landlords directly. I think coming at several different fronts can tackle the problem. I think a, just, I know it's not, you weren't trying to minimize it, but speaking is one thing. I think a significant shot across the bow of every landlord of every property that's affected. I would let everybody who has been, been an arrest, I agree. absolutely yes. know, and I'd right. let everybody who has one of these tenants, you ought to take a second look because if yeah. you know what's going on, we are going to take sure. your building and cite the law, make it clear. and. Um, and then, I, you know, we probably should start an action against one of them 
uh, just so everybody gets the message. You know, and if, if it doesn't change, we'll go after more. But I think we really should. So. Right. Hey, can I, sure. Tracy, can I, can I hold on to this, Tracy? Can I hold on to this? Oh, absolutely. Because interestingly absolutely. enough. Absolutely. Two of them have the same. Right. No, I see this. But three of them on this list okay. actually have licenses of the Massachusetts. Yes. Can I find that? Interesting. Really quick. It's up to the chair. Short, like 30 seconds quick? <laughs> really quick. Excellent. Just identify yourself, please. Melissa Gagliotti. Great. Um, I recently went to visit one of these because I saw the post and I was very curious having my own licenses. I know what it requires. So the first time I went, woman saw me, would not answer the door. Rang, 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 rang the doorbell. Ring the doorbell. Well, number one, doors aren't supposed to be locked. That's a fire hazard. So that kind of, I was curious on that. And there was people in the building because you could hear people talking. Mm -hmm. So then I went a second time. Second time the door was open, language barrier. You want massage. Right there and then she's offering massage. I looked on the board because I having my license has to be placed up there. Mm -hmm. No licenses. Mm -hmm. So I called. And I um, called the certification and I talked to Sean and I asked him and I told him everything that was going on and just asked him, can you please look into this because, and I explained to him, as thankfully somebody posted, what we already talked about, what was on that. Now my question for you is, I called another one after that yeah. and I said, as if I was making an appointment, and then I asked, if I go in, can I see your license, just to make sure your license, sure. woman would not talk to me, hung up. And I have it on recording. And when I talked to Sean, I said, listen, we have a serious problem. Mm -hmm. This is when I knew it wasn't just one. Right. We had many in town. So that was just my concern. And I just wanted to bring it. And I appreciate everything. Thank You've you. done pretty much everything I wanted to know. You've already answered. Yes. But I just want to let you know my experience personally. Thank you very much. So thank you. OK. Can I um, not re we can't. We have to go into public um, hearing now, Rada. Thank you. Um, we need a motion to go back into the public hearing. So moved. Second. Okay. Roll call? Yes. Yes. Brian? Aye. Aye. Oh, okay. If we could grab Reading up Rick? Local Rick Stinson. Here he is. Thank you for your patience. Oh, no problem. Good evening. Hi, Bert. Hi, Carol. Rick, we're here for setting the water and sewer rates. Yes. Uh, jump in. Sure. Thank you very much. Um, and good evening. Um, the uh, recommendation for the water and sewer rates is $15 uh, per in six dollars and fifteen cents per hundred cubic feet for water and ten dollars and fifty five cents per hundred cubic foot for sewer um, the uh, page three of the memo you received covers uh, the four recommendations that you need to vote on um, the combined rate is an increase of three point seven two percent our average bill will again be lower than Stoneham, Melrose, and Reading. Uh, Melrose rate, so you'll know, increased 5.92%. Reading increased 3.23%. Uh, one of the things that Reading did this year is they eliminated their discount. So when you look at their rate, their rate actually went down. Um, but when you calculate the average bill, it actually went up by 3.23%. Um, We've talked about that in the past um, because in reality what you do is raise the rate to provide a discount and encourage people to pay. Um, the uh, our consumption is lower than it was in 1960. Uh, so consumption continues to be a problem um, and that's uh, when you don't have uh, a large enough consumption uh, the and they have declines, the revenues are ne negatively impacted. Uh, we have util utilized reserves um, to cover capital and warrant articles, and we need to have sufficient reserves to provide for the consumption shortfalls um, 
emergencies and capital and, and warrant articles. Uh, the town is trying to reach a 10% goal um, on the tax side for um, a reserve in the bank. If you look at the reserves, the water is at 4.45% and the sewer is at 5.76%. Um, so we're a long ways from there. Um, and and in, actu in reality, it probably should be even higher than 10% because the infrastructure that goes along with the water and sewer system is substantial. Um, the combined increase for the average user will be $64.80 for an average bill, someone who has water and sewer, and it comes out to $16.20 per quarter. The, and that is after the discount. Um, if you think about buying, I don't know, eight of these here, that would cost you $1.25 to $1.50 in a store. And if you did um, uh, the eight, it would, the eight would come out to about mm -hmm. probably $12 if you bought them individually. Uh, when you look at a gallon of water from Wakefield, uh, the water and sewer cost is two cents compared to just this one alone would be a, a dollar and a quarter, uh, but it's two cents for a full gallon. That's a r really great bargain. I don't know if people realize that. Uh, also, you have the, um, you know that it, it, it's tested constantly because uh, we're required to meet certain standards. I don't know if everyone saw, but uh, Niagara Water, which yeah. has a plant in Pennsylvania, was just hit with E. coli, and it has hit um, not the stores around here, but it has impacted uh, some of the stores I was surprised at that received the water Shaw's and Wegmans and 7-Eleven, and, um, but it, it can happen because they don't have the same requirements that we do. Um, the uh, MWRA um, continues to be the biggest uh, impact to the water and sewer budget. On the water side, it's 42.87%. On the sewer side, it's 77.29%. And, and finally, I guess, paying your bill and taking advantage of that discount, we encourage everyone to do that. We want them to take, to take advantage of that. If you don't take the discount on an average bill, you lose uh, $50.10 in that quarter. <laughs> if you add on the $10 demand, and the interest, because we charge 14% interest, um, you will be, uh, you lose $71.79 a quarter. Uh, so we want everyone to take that and uh, um, take advantage of that discount. And uh, with that, any questions you have, I'd be glad to try to answer. Paul? Thank you, Madam Chair. Rick, I'm going to be real quick. Okay. You do a great job on this every year. Um, because a couple of issues came to light, I'm going to ask you about the well water. Okay. Sure. Uh, um, explain to me. And how many well? How many actual residents have wells that provide their drinking water, as well as well, the drinking water comes into the house from their well. Yep. Let, and let me go over what we do so everyone knows. Um, we have always used the AWWA standard for calculating that flat rate. Uh, the AWWA standard um, uses uh, an average home and it uses uh, 12,000 cubic feet per year, which comes out to 89,000 gallons and change per year. Um, the, you, have, you have an option. There are 11, to answer your question directly, there's 11 uh, homes. The, and and the, the important things to note is that the sewer calculation is not perfect, never will be perfect. It's impossible unless you put a meter on there to make it perfect. And even then it wouldn't be because there are other factors that go into it. Uh, residents um, have always had the option to install a meter on their well line to calculate the sewer portion. Um, and I believe we have had a couple that have done that. Um, 
or they, we use the AWWA standard. And why do we use that? Um, I know that people will say, well, this average is here, this, you know, on the number of people in a home. Um, we don't know how many people are in a home. Um, the people move in, move out, they put in in-law apartments you don't know about. Um, we don't know what they have in their home. Um, we don't know whether their water consumption, what their pattern is. Uh, they could have a business in the home and we wouldn't know that. Um, so we use that industry standard because it is a um, kind of universal thing, it's fair, uh, but you can always install a meter and get, the, get it off of that. Uh, one of the things to know is that um, if I were to use something different and use just, if I look at this year's per capita usage from Wakefield, we were 64 gallons per person. When I calculate that out based on um, the average home, uh, it comes out to 93,440 gallons or 12,492 cubic feet. Uh, the question that people would argue is in the home of number of people, okay? Um, it can change, it varies, I have no idea what it is. Um, so that's our recommendation, the advisory board's recommendation, mm -hmm. and our recommendation is to continue with the AWWA standard, yeah. and you would use, if they want to get a meter, they can get a meter, they, can get a meter. they would have a plumber install it. Okay. Paul, do you have a follow-up? Well, I just, I just want to make sure that, so right now we're recommending in us to utilize what's already in place and what has been in place. Correct. So the second meter could be put in. Uh, will, there will be no restrictions. It's not a second meter, no, no. it'll be an no, only meter. Not a second meter. No. Okay, well, okay right. you'll put on only meter. Now, if it's right. coming out of their well, the question that came up was, would they be allowed to tap the line going into the house prior to entering the house to water the, the, the yard? Well, you wouldn't tap it prior to entering the house if you did the, the irrigation portion of it. If you have a sewer line, if, if, yeah. if you have a meter on your sewer line, then whatever went in your yard isn't going through there. Well, so are, you, we talking about, are we talking about the so location of the sewer or the water? He's not adding that. Right. The, you, the location would go in the house. Right, and you are we would talking put it, metering the water or are we talking about metering the storage? We'd be metering for sewerage. Remember, we use water yeah. to mes measure yeah. sewerage. It is not a fair system, and okay. it never You're will right. be. A number of right. things happen. You'll see it in the other memo I gave you. Um, let's look at the sewer system, what makes it up, what happens. Um, there are a lot of influences on the sewer system that can't be calculated from water consumption. One is if, if I had two cases of beer and it went bad, and I dump it down the drain, you're never gonna know what it is. If you have a sump pump and that's going in the sewer system, if you have um, an irrigation system, your line is cracked, there's inflow infiltration in the system, well obviously if you irrigate more than other people and you have a cracked line with loose connections, that's going into the sewer system. Uh, that's something we continue to work on. So when you look at that number, um, of water consumption, um, and if you, and let me find it here and I can tell you, the, um, where'd it go? No, um, where did I put that? Which way are you looking for? Um, I'll find it here, let me just, uh, well, Rick, my question, though, is mainly this. If I have a well and the pipe is going ahead into the house, just pick it on the pipe prior to it entering the house where the metering device would possibly be installed so it will potentially lower the person's uh, consumption on storage. You follow me on that one? Right. The, could they it, put the, the meter could, after the irrigation line yeah. so that you right. meter the water right. going in the Could house. that possibly be done? Right. So they Great. wouldn't have to worry right. about them uh, being charged storage for watering their lawn because right. they have a well, correct? Yep. Okay. Um, so the, 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 and the other the thing I was going to bring up was um, 
our daily water consumption average is 1.85 million gallons. Our sewer flow, okay, and we're not just build on flow, um, I'll explain the formula in a second, is 3.74 million. Mm -hmm. And our average is 5.57 million. So you can see there's a lot of stuff going in the sewer system that comes from other places, sure. okay? Yeah. It's not just water. Water is just a means to, to build. Our assessment rate, which is only one part of the formula, the assessment's based on flow, uh, high, high flow, strength flow. Uh, it's based on um, uh, population, which is a component of it. It's based on total suspended solids, and it's also based on biochemical uh, oxygen demand. Okay, so you can't. It just doesn't work, you know. Good, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Matthew. Brian, did you have a question? Yeah, just on the on the second. Meter, so the policy again is, I, I read it. Right, we we don't want to allow a second meter for irrigation, right? Right. And That's a, the advisory board's recommendation. And, and, and the basis for that, I'll just paraphrase it, is because some people would have to pay more because other people would get it would get to pay less. That, right. But there's other factors too that. Um, and I think I have, I don't know, probably 10 points in there. Um, one is that um, we, our sewer rate would obviously increase, okay? You'd have less flow. And, and remember that we're basing it on water, but water doesn't cover the whole portion of it. Um, the, so uh, if everyone took advantage of it, Let's say everyone in town put in a second meter. Uh, there would be no advantage. The rates would stay the same. But so it would, be a, it would be a far more fair. No, the system. rates would still be the same. Okay. But I'd be using mm -hmm. less water. Right. Yeah. I'm no, you wouldn't use less water. You'd probably use more. The, the rate would stay the same, but I would be charged right. for less water. No, more water. Water. Because you'd still pay in the same amount of water. Oh, for water, but right? For the sewer suicide. 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 But remember, yeah. our budget's not going to change. Yeah, no. our budget's going to. Yeah, the worst the thing happen, nation, right? If people continue right. to waste water, <laughs> right. it costs a lot less. I want, I yeah, want I people that. to use water. I want people to use water. Yeah, we <laughs> want people. <laughs> <green ones>. Please <laughs> don't <Yeah>. water. <laughs> right. right. Okay. No, I know. I know the economics. He wants green ones. Yeah, um, I guess that my, I just have to get my comment in that uh, yeah. the, the the whole. That whole you can't have a meter to it, it's it's very socialist, right? It's uh, you know it's it's just simply if we did that, people would then be paying their fair share instead of their fair share plus covering other people. But if everyone <laughs> did it, but not everyone's not going to do it. It wouldn't so. change, right? Yeah. Okay. So. The the other portion of it is you'll never um, you still have that inflow infiltration. You'll never know who puts the most into the system. Mm -hmm. So if you have a sump pump and that's going in the sewer system, yeah. it's not being captured, okay? Um, it, there is also a capital cost. To, uh, we would have to upfront the money. Make the homeowners pay. So they would they have to, to be, uh, yeah. Well, they would. They would pay for the meter. But in order to do that, we don't have a revolving fund. So they would have to upfront the money we go into the, uh, we'd buy the meters and the installs and all that. So that, we use the figure of 25%. I don't know if that's high or low, uh, but that would be $654,000 that you'd have to go to town meeting for. And you can't, you can't meter what's coming out of the house. Wouldn't that be the logical? On a suicide, on a residential side, yeah. one, it would be very expensive to put yeah. a meter there. Uh, be very expensive for the homeowner because they'd have to dig up their basement or finished basement yeah, yeah. or whatever. Uh, and then those meters aren't act completely accurate when you have such a small volume going out. Right. Okay. Okay. I from the public would like to speak about this as it is a public hearing. Okay. Um, oh, Madam Phyllis. Chairman. Absolutely. I, Rick, you can't get away from me yet. Okay. <laughs> I'm going back to trash. Now, we did send letters, I understand, I hope, to people that if they have... I'm sorry, Phyllis, we should probably... 
Oh, I thought he was done. Later. No, because we have to move on to the boats. Take the vote on the water. We're taking the vote then on we'll the water. Then we'll do it. And then we'll do the trash. Oh. We haven't taken a vote on the water yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just don't want Rick to leave. No, we won't <laughs> let him leave. <laughs> so, <laughs> it looks like we have five. Uh, four. Four. Uh, oh, the, um, I think we were counting this. The second, second meter, meter base, base charge. charge. Is yeah. that part of the first? Right. Okay. So, um, should we take a separate one? I think we could do them all together. Okay. So is there, we can take them all together. Um, is there a motion to set the water rate at $6.15 per 100 cubic feet um, with a second meter base charge of $18 plus current water rate per quarter, which has not changed from the previous year? Um, the second vote, the second point is the setting the sewer rate of $10.55 per 100 cubic feet. Um, the next is the sewer flat rate, which is $316.50 per quarter or $284.85 after um, folks take the discount. Um, the septic, the next is the septic disposal rate. The facility opening and maintenance charge of $110 per delivery. Disposal cost per 100 cubic feet is charged at the current sewer rate. The off-hour disposal rate, additional minimum three hours at current W9 scale times 1.5. I have no idea what that means, but I just... It, it, it just takes, comes in, we have to pay three hour uh, minimum. It takes their rate Perfect. times the time they have. Thank you. <laughs> we try, we don't get yeah. right, right. a lot, okay. so. Um, can I have so a motion? Means. Second? On setting the rate? I'm sec I'll second that. I okay. thought, because we had already agreed to this, that it's okay. Okay. I second it. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> Moved by Paul, second by Phyllis. All in favor of the water. Aye. 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 Yeah. Yes. Motion to close. Do so we have a motion to close? Thank you, um, Paul. Second by Brian. Roll all in favor. Yep. Um, I know. I was doing all in favor and then roll call. I haven't got that down yet. Yes. Um, roll call. Yes, yes. yes. Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you um, all all in favor to close the meeting. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't, let, don't let Rick go now. We're not no. letting Rick go. No. <laughs> the, open, the, the public meeting is closed, but okay. Rick, you have to stay. Okay. Okay. Stick along. However, um, I know we were to send letters to the people that had to get, either have the trash removed themselves or get a dumpster because they were more than four apartments. This is not happening. Some people are not following these rules, okay? And um, I don't mind, I'll say, tell you one thing myself. One Salem Street, they have five apartments, they're still putting out four barrels. Okay. We, Why we haven't we them, gone to get those barrels? Uh, we did the same thing that we did with the initial mailing, is we gave them a 90-day notice. Well, isn't okay. there 90 days up? No, no, because it came, the 90-day time frame didn't start until I'd have to look and see, but well, it's got to be, it's got to be close. close. It was be close. Yeah, because yeah. people keep because there are some people that did it without having to wait. They knew yeah, most that of was them the did rule not do and, it until the ninety. And, but you have these two or three yeah. people that I really am keeping my eye on them because yeah. I want them to be able to follow the rules like right. everybody else. Yeah. yeah, most of them did not. Out of the ones we had, most of them did not do it till the ninety-day point. Okay, no, they didn't. You're right. Madison. Okay, that's all. I just wanted to make sure that we follow through on that. Yes, Paul. Just on the similar subject, is there any way that we can, because of what we did with our trash, it's now making it harder for certain businesses that have residential above, but there's no disposal in their back. They have no back area to put a dumpster. Is there any way that we can come to an agreement with them to pick up their trash in those areas? We have... It, it if they have fun. more than four units, we do not pick up the trash. Right. If the, if they have um, two units above in the business down below, it's ball, we pick up the two units. Right. That's all. So there's no nothing we can right. do for the business. No. Okay. Correct. We don't pick up the, any business trash. Okay. Okay. No. Thanks, Rick. Thank okay. You. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Go home and take long showers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All that water. Yeah, use the water. Yep, number three.
Um, we're going to jump back to number three, license <laughs> permits and approvals. We need a motion um, for the Wakefield Bolodrome Bowling Alley license renewal. So moved. Second. Moved by Paul, second by Phyllis. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We need another motion for the Clarion Inn, the pool table license renewal. So, so moved. moved. Second. Moved by Phyllis, second by Paul. All in favor? Aye. 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 Excellent. Um, okay, we are moving past um, 5A. Um, we don't have anyone to present on that. Um, 5B, there was a request from the West Side Social Club. It was in your packets for the 4th of July. West Side Social Club 4th of July committee to use the upper and lower commons to hold the 4th of July celebration beginning on Friday, July 3rd at 6 a.m., 5th at 6 a.m., and to also have the right to designate concession areas on the lower common in Colonel Conley Park for concessions. We need a motion. So move. So move. Moved by Brian, second by Paul. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Going to 5C, the community compact. I'm going to put this, give this to Steve to present. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, in your packet is a letter from Governor Baker. And what Governor Baker has uh, has, has done is he's, he has kind of created a partnership with municipalities. And they kind of want us to look at best practices in certain areas in which they will provide us with technical assistance and you know help us in moving the town forward in certain areas. It's in your packet. What I would like to do, Madam Chair, is mm -hmm. to have this as an agenda item, perhaps at our next meeting. I wanted to discuss it. I'd love to hear from you because there's a number of items in here that uh, I might think that we should look at, uh, but I think there are things that the board, uh, I'm gonna ask you not to uh, weigh on any items that we have done because we, we're doing a lot of these things, especially in the financial area and capital planning and what have you. But there are some areas in economic development and um, some uh, regional uh, uh, transportation and citizen safety areas that we may want to look at. So what I'd love to do is if um, between now and the next meeting, Madam mm -hmm. Chair, if sure. uh, board members come in to me and maybe we could have a little discussion and then our next meeting really go forward and put this uh, whole package forward to the governor, picking maybe two or three areas. Um, these are really great because they will give us some technical assistance which may help us in mm -hmm. some drafting and I think it'll also help us in getting extra points they don't say that but getting extra points for grants and what have you which yeah. really help move the money forward so I'd love to see that happen oh. i think that's great so we'll put it on the agenda for the next <coughs> um meeting and i think it's important to focus on just a small number okay. two or three so the impact is strong yeah okay um there is a library request um oh, no number so um, the Board of Library, library Trustees requests approval to accept and expend a gift or gift to the libraries, and I'm not seeing a specific number. $1,166. Oh, okay. $1, okay. Yeah. Oh, thanks, nice, nice Got it. So oh, there it is. I didn't have it in mind when I printed it out. Yeah. Um, $1,166. Thank you, Paul. Um, moved by Paul, second. All right. Brian. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, there is also, um, is this Mr. Yes, but I was the door was actually there. Yeah, um, a request from Leslie Doyle to donate a park bench to be placed at Veterans Field, and Mr. Doyle is coming before us to talk a little bit. Hello, did Steve, uh, nice to meet you in person. Nice to meet you, Mr. Doyle. Uh, just one correction, is my name is Dole. Dole, Dole. you know, it says Dole. Dole. We I saw Dole. Dole. Like yeah. the pineapple? Absolutely, okay. Mr. Dole, I'm All so right. sorry about that. Hopefully you don't use Del Monte. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Great. Do you want to come up? Uh, sure. Sure. Thank you. Did Abby? Did you yep. get? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, and the we board did. has received. The okay. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. So I was hoping that uh, the board would see fit to uh, either make an exception, or I'm not sure where the uh, the situation is in regard to uh, benches, uh, whether one could be added. And I kind of mentioned why I'd like to have it on uh, on the Church Street side since we. Uh, since we were there for 32 years. Just um, um, we just got um, um, a site between Mr. Dole and the and the DPW in that area, but that should be no issue. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't see any issue either. So if the DPW can weigh in on it, Mr. Dole, you can also they can chat with you, um, okay. and I'm sure it'll be a beautiful bench in a beautiful location to honor your daughter. Okay. Thank you. Thank very much. Any Thank questions you. or comments from anyone? No. Great. That was great. Excellent. Thank you so much for Thank both you. coming in.
Thank you. Is there, um, you can stay and listen to this, but it's, is there a motion to have the bench so moved. placed? Second. Please. Moved by Paul, second by Phyllis. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you for your time. time. Well, Thank you. Have a very night. I need to have a big sign that says motion. Yeah. I always forget. Um, okay, there is a recommendation from the Traffic Advisory Committee that we need a motion on. There was information in your packet with regard to a four-way stop at the intersection of Chestnut Street and Emerson Street, changing the flashing yellow light for Chestnut to red flashing, um, which I think makes it a four-way stop. And the addition of stop signs on Chestnut would also require the, require the installation of advanced warning signs and the use of all-way plaques on the existing and new stop sign posts. Is there a motion? Moved, Moved by Paul. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we just have several um, articles of correspondence in your um, packet, and now we can go around the table. Um, Tom, do you have anything? Nothing, thanks. Excellent. Okay, Brian? Uh, yeah, just, uh, just a quick question on the week specifically. Uh, does anybody know if they filed anything or what they might file with our town hall? Because I haven't been able to locate them in the Massachusetts Corporation's database. And um, I just noticed that they've been operating as an entity. They've signed letters to the editor as an entity, which doesn't exist, which basically makes it an anonymous letter uh, to the editor. But under the, the, the ruse of being some, some organization, which gives it, you know, it would be helpful if people knew it's just the same people writing the same stuff as opposed to some organization that actually has merit and credibility in terms of the paper. So. Um, I'm very curious. I, I was unable to find Wakefield Civically at League in the Mass Corporate Database. So, do you have any idea, Tom? No, I don't know. Um, you would not necessarily have to file anything with the town hall unless you were doing business under a name other than your own and you were not a corporation. Right. Now, I don't think that they're doing business. Uh, that is, the statute does not contemplate that advocacy constitutes business. So okay. the, I, I just, the DBA statute would not be applicable. Um, I'm thinking that if they wanted some kind of tax, favorable tax treatment, um, then they would have to become some kind of entity, most likely a nonprofit, nonprofit. corporation. I, I guess it's just th then, you know, maybe a quick heads up to our, to our local Newspapers, plural, that maybe um, in the future they ought to double check who's writing a lot to write letters and just create organization names that don't exist and sign them that way and let them be published. I have lots of things to say. If you think I have a lot to say um, publicly with my own face, my own mouth, my own pen, think of all the fun things I'd like to say anonymously. So um, I think we ought to be very careful about, about uh, just as a community, about how we handle that. And um, someone could. A group of people could get together and form whatever they want to call it, a league, but I agree. If they are presenting opinions, they are writing letters to the paper that everyone's name should be included in that so you if can see. If it's Coca-Cola Corporation, I can go on right. to the corporate web to database, look it. up Coca-Cola, okay. see who their board of directors are, who their officers are. Right. Wakefield Civic League is a non-entity. It doesn't exist except in the minds of the people who think it does. And when they sign letters to the editor to that effect, it just undermines the credibility of the entire process. So ironically, it's the prying foul over is the one they choose to violate. So um, I guess that's about it. So just uh, know, know, your, know who you're dealing with when you're receiving these messages, I guess. So Thank you. thanks. Paul. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm going to touch on the earlier discussion. Um, regarding the um, body works. Um, there are a couple of things. If the health issue is one of the strongest points that we can go after right now that Steve is, is going to pursue with the Board of Health tomorrow, is there also a way that we can possibly, and, and this is something I discussed with you, can we put, change the zoning for that particular type of use as we did with the, um, the marijuana dispensaries um, what we did on Audubon Road, also what we did with the crematorium within uh, 1,500 feet of the lake. Why can't we body works within 1,500 feet of um, children activity? Um, if we've already 
passed laws to that effect and has made it muster through the, the Attorney General's office, why can't we do it again regarding this? I mean, that's just an approach off the top of my head right. as far as that way. The other thing is the safety. They mentioned several times, one way in, one way out. Who would that be? Would that be the fire department? Checking that out, would that be Jackie Roberto? Well, it would probably be both if they're locking the door during the day. Well, maybe but, we um, should pursue that yeah. too, because again, the door should never be locked if there's people inside. It's a, it's a fire risk. Yeah. Okay, so those are two questions that. Yeah, Madam Chair. Absolutely. Could I, um, Paul? Uh, in many ways, the uh, Board of Health regulations would provide a stronger means of enforcement than a zoning bylaw. Uh, chiefly because a zoning bylaw uh, has grandfathering effect. So anybody who's in business or already there would be unaffected by a change in zoning. That I remember, yes. Yeah. That's true. There is no grandfathering with respect to uh, any enactment by the Board of Health. That's right. Okay. I, I think, just Paul, your, your point is a good one nonetheless, just going forward, right, as a kind of prophylactic measure uh, um, that we ought to. Um, you ought to look into that. And I think rather than coming up with regulations about how far away from certain other, because that kind of targets the business, making it uh, something only permissible by a special permit would require somebody to go in front of the Board of Appeals, explain their business, what their purpose is. And one of the, um, one of the tests in a special permit is there is, the questions is, is there an excess of that particular use in the area? Your Board of Appeals is allowed to make that decision. They could easily look and say, we already have eight massage, you know, uh, entities, and probably more, because that's the eight uh, that are characterized in this mm -hmm. website as the erotic ones. That, plus the legitimate ones, is plenty to say, hey, we have a reasonable basis to say we don't need any more massage parlors in Wakefield. That's a good point, and that might ought to be the change we look at. It require, I think, town meeting action, but change uh, that use to something permissible only by special permit. At least one layer of review before the, the signs go up and the, and the business is open. One last thing. Sure. I talked with Steve about um, an appeal to go before the traffic advisory board regarding modules. If you can, we can move forward on that one, please. Um, there's a, 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 having gone from a truck to a car, I'm finding it now when I approach Water Street for Montrose, I'm actually coming further out into Water Street in order to see the sight distance on my left side. Okay, and people coming on the right don't stop for you. So I'm creeping further and further into Water Street just so I can see what traffic is coming down. Like. That's a hell. Kind of if something could be looked into, see if the, the lieutenant can uh, come up with a yes or no on that. That would be good. Isn't that a matter for the fence viewers, right? And it's two things: fence viewers, or are they just lines? And then the other is that there's a, there's a bylaw that says that a fence can't obstruct the sight line across the diagonal across the property in an intersection like that. At some point, um, 30 foot high, you know, completely obtuse, or the, whatever the word is, but uh, something that completely obstructs in the form of arborvitaes qualifies as a fence. I don't know that a fence has to be made out of wood uh, or something like that. Uh, I don't know, but it's obviously the purpose of that bylaw that says you need to be able to see the, across the corner um, is precisely what the issue is there. So I don't know. I, I think that I would use. Um our traffic advisor, because he will pull out the actual sight lines needed. And he'll know a little bit, you know, he'll have a little yeah. bit of med expertise. But then the power to go say you got to yep. change it, huh. you know. That it may be a land issue there, so there's a lot of things that, but you're right. We're yeah. going off fronts. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty uh, dangerous corner, to be sure. Thank you. Phyllis. Okay. I have several things I want to bring up. One of the things that I want to bring up was resolved with uh, Rick Stinson. I didn't realize we were that close. <clears throat> okay. But well, we will check on that. I'll have that date for you tomorrow. Okay. Um, maybe because uh, I have to work and because it's difficult to survive today, in um, Tuesday's item, June 16th, I read that the school board voted to increase salary ranges for positions not represented by unions, okay? I look at some of these salary increases and, and, I'm, and I'm astounded. It's not bad enough that the school committee, I'm bringing this up because it affects in Wakefield. It's bad enough that 
we got an 11% increase and $3 million more for the schools. And we're continuing to do this, you know, with these certain positions. I look at our board, and granted, we do make an effort to negotiate so that we keep things pretty stable and that, you know, the taxpayers aren't getting killed with increases. And, and, and it upsets me about this, about what's going on here. Yet, furthermore, I want to know um, why um, we haven't, uh, why we haven't had negotiations. I was told that we, they were going to have a meeting, negotiations for the cleanliness, the maintenance, and everything of the schools. And now I hear that I don't hear anything about these negotiations. I, it might be a rumor, but I don't think so. I think I understand people applying for the job of janitor or maintenance and an increase of ten to twenty thousand dollars more of what they're making. You know, this affects all of us, and I think we should be have some knowledge of what's going on in this area. You know, we approved a feasibility study for the high school, and we hired an architect for almost a hundred thousand dollars, and we have heard nothing. They're supposed to come before us and let us know what's going on. I mean, we need an update from the SBA, from the state. <clears throat> we need an update from this building committee, letting us know what's going on. And I think it is time for us uh, to ask Chairman Bertrand to bring us up to date. We, have, we don't even have an update on where the Galvin School is, if it's really going to be finished on time, if it's going to cost more money. We, as the Board of Selectmen, should have that information, and we don't have it, okay? And, and I'm, it annoys me, because I certainly don't want my taxes going up $800 again next year, like they did this past year. And, and I'm on, under the impression that if we don't force these issues, these people will just continue to do it, spend all this money, and then they'll just tell us it's done. That's it. And I, I would like your opinion on how I feel about this. I would like somebody, another member of this board to say something. On one of them, on the Galvin, Phyllis, I remember getting an update. I don't. Recently, that the Galvin was on time, it was on budget. Well, the last time that, um, that's not what I'm hearing. So I would like well, them to come and tell us. Well, they did though. They two meetings ago, I think two to three meetings. Who came? Um, Chip. I think he came and asked about the skate park, right? Right, right, right but yeah. he at that yeah. ordered that the Galvin yeah. was on budget right. and was going to be finished yeah, in Galvin, time. Galvin, my, my understanding is Galvin is on time, on budget. Right. right. But why don't, we, why don't we, to Phyllis's point, maybe we have a, yep. a formal? We we'll get the building committee in. Sure. to yep. come in and give a formal report. To yeah, the I think it would be good if uh, the chair of the, the building committee, Mr. Bertrand, came before us and brought us up to date, especially on this, because I, I all I can think is if they, they're deciding to tear down, I hope they're not, but if they're deciding to tear down a new school, I can think of the new tennis courts, the new, uh, the new fields, the, uh, the auditorium, everything being torn down for no reason. It upsets me about this, it really does. And I, and I think we have a right to know what's going on. Okay, one of the other things that I wanted to bring up, this was brought to my attention, I didn't even realize it, but people have asked me, they, uh, why doesn't our town vehicles with a blue license plate have a logo on them? People that use, I don't mean the police department, just uh, so that we would know, because I guess, I guess people, I don't know if they do use their vehicles for other than business purposes, but they would like, they would like to know if it would be possible for the blue license plates to have a logo saying that they're Wakefield cars. I can look into that. I, and I door. think it would be good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. This is my last one, but I have to tell you. I am so sick and tired of people being rude in the cemetery. We have big signs up there that says no dogs, no bicycles, no skateboards. Cemetery 
a couple of times a week. And every time I go there, bar none, I will see someone. They come in through the back way or however they come in. They come in with their dogs. I see parents bringing their children in there with bicycles. I stop my car. I try to be as polite as I can. And I say, do you see the big red signs here? It says no dogs, no bicycles. They don't care. They look at me like I got two heads and I have the nerve to ask them why they're in the cemetery. One woman said to me, well, we only walk around the edge. The dog only goes around the edge and I pick it up. I don't want, I don't care how anybody else feels. I don't want dogs in the cemetery. I, I don't know what we can do about it. What can we do about it? Really yes, the cemetery can't. workers, when they They're see it. They're not here all the time. You'd have to have someone there 24-7. Is there uh, <laughs> um, new signage or something? Plug the holes in the fences that they're cutting through? I mean, I don't know how, what else you could possibly do. I mean, it's actually, a, if there's a, if, is there a way to go in one side and out the other? And you know, you know there's, a, there's an entrance in the back where they can get in. Well, that's the solution. Yeah, and uh, you know, Part of it, anyway. there are people that walk in the cemetery all the time, which I think is wonderful. They take their daily walks in there. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely fantastic. But when they, for some reason or another, I must be the one that catch all the people <laughs> with all the dogs. And when they see me, some of the people know who I am. They just take their dog and they run out to the front gate. But Good they job. they go right <laughs> back in there. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> it's, it's working. I gotta tell you, it's, I know we're putting up another new lodge sign in the front, which we always had, which was torn down. So hopefully that will help some of it. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you, all of you. But the reason I bring this to you is because it's what I hear every day, and I feel like I'm here for the people. And it's my job to do this. So, and I'm sure that you will help in any way that you can. Thank you, Phyllis. That's it. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Is there a motion? Oh, sorry. Thank God you're next to me. Um, I would ask you, Steve, for the next meeting to look into the Wakefield Civic League on all fronts and concerns. Um, I think I'm all set. Is there a motion to close the meeting? So moved. Adjourn. Second. Moved by Paul, second by Brian. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you.